Uh, Tigers do get the win, 45-35. We're talking about it here in hour number one. We'll get to the SEC slate at the top of hour number two and certainly cover Saints and Bengals as well. But really, really nice win for LSU uh, to go on the road to Gainesville and get this one done in a rivalry that's kind of becoming a little bit lopsided, dare I say. Uh, LSU at this point is owns Florida. They have won four in a row in this rivalry. Um, they have now won five of six in this rivalry. They have now won six of nine. They have won 11 of 16. Look, it's uh, it's been all LSU over the last decade between LSU and Florida, and it was a really impressive performance by a team that uh, is, is inconsistent. At times they look really, really bad, but at times they look really, really good. Um, and sometimes that's been half to half in games. They were pretty good start to finish outside of a couple big plays in this when they get a 10 point win in the swamp. Yeah. Big time win for the Tigers, especially, uh, with their offensive performances, you kind of had the past two weeks. Um, just, you couldn't do that going into the swamp, especially with the way AR starting that game through that big post route and thought the swamp was about the roof was about to blow out yep. the swamp. And, uh, I thought the way the offense continued to battle, continue to make big plays. Um, it took so much pressure off the defense. Normally, if someone had told me, hey, Florida's going to score 35 points in this game, how great do you feel about LSU going into the swamp and getting it done? I would have not felt great at all just looking at the offense, the way they played all season. But I thought, you know, from totality, I think really the big part, the X factor in all this is getting the freshman left tackle in there. I yeah. thought who would have thought having the freshman left tackle in there got a lot more push in the run game. You saw that, especially on runs to the left side. And I thought, obviously, just the way JD5 played. That's the guy that Coach Kelly named the starter. That's the guy they continue to stick with week in and week out, and that's a play that they expect from him. And if he can continue to play like that, um, especially with the weapons he has on the outside, you're going to see this offense score a lot more points than they have all season. But all in all, that was a big-time performance for this team to go on the road with a team uh, that was really scoring points and getting big plays, but to continue to bite, fight and battle and figure out a way to win. That was a huge confidence boost for this team. Look, um, I think what would could be safe to say before the season, when you were looking at this quarterback battle and you're looking at Jaden Daniels, who had started 30 games at Arizona State, and you're looking at Garrett Nussmeyer, who had started zero, you'd say, well, you're going with the safer play. He's got... He's got the low, the higher floor. He's, he's, he's. In fact, when you watch the way this offense played, he's got the higher ceiling. Now there have been times where LSU's been terrible in offense. They were not good in the first half against Florida State. They were not good uh, against Auburn in the first half. They were not good against Tennessee for most of the game last week. So it's not as if this is happening routinely. But what he did on Saturday is more impressive to me than what anything Garrett Nussmeyer could do because he's got the speed and the athleticism, got the ability to extend some plays, and then you get the ball to your playmaker's hands. They scored touchdowns on their first six drives, and these are not short field touchdowns. These are not big play touchdowns in most cases. This is just putting together football drives. Through three quarters of play in this game, LSU had accumulated every possible yard, 100% yards converted. First drive, 12 plays, 75 yards. Second drive, 12 plays, 73 yards. Third play, third drive, seven plays, 75 yards. Fourth drive, 83 yards on five plays. Fifth drive, 75 yards. The average starting field position on these first six touchdown drives was LSU's own 22. They were routinely going 78 yards for touchdowns. That was a clinic by LSU's offense. Yeah, it definitely was. And, and I talked about it with this offense all season long. Uh, the best way to do that is get chunk plays. And you saw this offense finally do that in a high clip. I don't know how bad that Florida defense actually is because I don't think they could have played any worse than they did at home with the home field advantage behind them. But uh, you got you finally got the chunk plays. You got them in the run game. You got them with JD5 using the slicks. You got them obviously in the passing game, the vertical passing attack. And uh, that's how you score the amount of points they do, um, especially when you kind of are on the road. You're dealing with the hostile road noise. You got to get those chunk plays to take the crowd out of it. And I thought they start the game that way and they finish it that way. So if, if you're going to continue to play like that, get this offense explosive plays, keep the defense off the field, score a bunch of points, it, it's just got to help you win football games a lot more than you have in the past, especially when you kind of look at some of the performances you did not play well in. The offense just was not playing to this level. So if they can continue to kind of replicate this going forward, this offense can be definitely uh, difficult to deal with, especially when you mix in JD5's legs. Yeah, and they were just so good on third down. They were, they converted eight of their first nine third downs, and the one they didn't convert was the 14-yard pass to Kayshawn, which they spotted at the 13 a yard short. They went for the fourth down and got it. I thought it was a bad spot. I thought he caught the ball a yard and a half past the sticks on that one. So even the one they didn't convert, I think they actually did convert it. 
Um, so just uh, awesome, awesome work. And they weren't even that short of third downs for the night. They averaged 7.5 yards on uh, for a third down attempt, and they were converting at an unbelievable clip. They ended up 8 of 12 in the game. So um, just uh, an awesome job by the offensive line, an awesome job by Jaden Daniels. Um, it's a Florida defense that's got its issues, sure, but LSU showed what it can be on offense. I just think um, it's – I think there are probably going to be some struggles at some point moving forward. I don't think there's something that's that's clicked and you've just got it. But w- what we knew is that they have playmakers. There are guys on the outside that can make plays. Jaden Daniels allowed them to do that for the first time really all year. He completed five of his eight passes that were more than 15 yards in the air. Five of eight in this game. Previous to this game, he was four of 24 on those throws against Power 5 teams. He averaged in the game 15.2 yards for completion and... and gave Brian Thomas a chance and gave Kayshawn a chance and gave Brian Thomas another chance and put the ball up and let his guys go do, do what they can do. Yeah, 100%. I've been calling for it all season. Uh, you got guys on the outside who haven't fallen off a cliff. They don't just think. I know everyone keeps mentioning these drops, but receivers are all about rhythm and confidence. If you give those guys confidence that you're going to give them chances, even the one they said BTJ dropped, I don't know what more you got to do to show that's a catch. It seems like he controlled it all the way down, pulled it up, pointed the ball forward. But even without that big-time catch, those guys were going down the field making plays. One-on-one coverage, our boy Jure, you know, doesn't get enough love. Throw that ball deep to Jure. He's down the sideline. Next thing you know, he's in the Little end zone. Little push off. They'll take it. I ain't <laughs> mad like, at they it. Don't, they don't call that. They don't uh-huh. call that. You got to really, really, like, flop for them to call that. So, it's a little hand fighting on Boyd Jure. Knows how to do that. Veteran player on this team. But, yeah, I thought Jaden, giving those guys the confidence, said, look, you guys run these routes down the field. I'm going to give you chances to make plays. And, and you saw them do that. And, interesting, the guy that everyone said quit on the team, didn't want to yeah. be here around, looked like he kind of showed up to play to me. I don't know. I'm not the brightest of guys in the bunch. But looked like seven made some plays to me. I don't know. He That's did. Kind of Six catches, saw. 115 yards in the game for for Kayshawn and I thought was really engaged celebrating with his teammates and he's really done a lot of that all year I think it would be easy to say oh yeah well he gets the 100 yard game and now you can see him jumping up and celebrating with his guys and, and I'm sure that did improve his mood I think that would make you a happier dude if you're getting the ball and making some plays however um he's been doing a lot of that all year long we saw him after the game against Auburn in the locker room when a lot of his guys you know TikTok videos and whatever getting fired up so Look, I, I'm glad they got him involved. He needs to be involved, and hopefully they, they unlocked a little something in the passing game because um, it was really, really good against Florida. And they also ran the ball um, pretty well, and it was a lot of Josh Williams. Now, half of his yards, he ran for 106. Half of them are on the 150-yarder, but we'll take the 50-yard. <laughs> yeah, he definitely will. And uh, those are the type of plays you need. Uh, anytime you have those big rushing attacks where you're going for over 100, normally you can sprinkle a big-time run in there, and that's exactly what they did. Um, and I, I thought that was a, a huge kind of momentum, you know, shock to the gut of that Florida defense. You're letting the former walk on just blitz you like he's beast mode and running a beast quake run and uh, just throwing guys off of him and just running through them. I, I thought, you know, that Florida defense was demoralized at that point in the game. It just There's nothing they could have done to stop the game, uh, stop that run game. And then you mix Jaden using his legs in there. He, he You can see why they fell in love with that. But I, I thought for Josh, you can see kind of why this coaching staff continues to stick with him, continues to give him the carries that he's getting because he runs extremely hard. And when you're tired of tackling someone, that's probably the last guy you want to be seeing on the second, uh, second level with a forward, I seen. So when we looked at this game entering the week, we looked back, and I ran, I read these stats off, I think, three different times. But Florida's scoring defense was 12th in the SEC. Their total defense was 12th in the SEC. Their rush defense was 13th in the SEC. Their pass defense was 11th in the SEC. They're towards the bottom, every statistical category you can come up with in the Southeastern Conference. So I think you could look at it and go, well, Florida's defense stinks. But the point is, Tennessee's pass defense had been terrible. And got gashed on Saturday once again. We'll talk about that game a little bit later. But you weren't able to do a lot against him. I know he threw for 300 yards. Did it really look like LSU was moving the ball in rhythm? No, it didn't. Auburn's defense stinks out loud. Did you go to the Plains and tear it up? No, you didn't. Um, So I think it's a a big step forward for LSU's offense, even if it's a bad defense you're playing against, to go out there and, and be productive in the way that they were. They were great on third down. They were balanced with the run in the pass. They made good decisions. They didn't put the ball in harm's way, and they let the big-time playmakers go make plays, and they did it. And so I think when you put the whole thing together, yes, Florida's defense is bad. They got serious issues that Napier's going to have to deal with moving forward over there, but it's still a huge deal for LSU to look as competent as they did on offense because there have been plenty of times this year where they have not. 
Yeah, no, they definitely haven't. I think anytime you, you play the way they did at home against that Tennessee defense, where we just saw give up how many points last Saturday? 49. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, you can't play that bad. And obviously the way you played against Auburn without the defense in that Auburn game, you definitely lose that game. So just watching this offense, those past two SEC games, it's, it was kind of hard to kind of say, man, like we can really depend on this. Or, hey, this is what we kind of do well. Uh, I thought this was the first time you kind of saw this team kind of have an identity. And that's we're going to stick with the run game. We're going to really trust our quarterback to go out there and make plays time and time again. And if, and if they can do that going forward and kind of build something, build some of the confidence within everyone, they can kind of replicate this again. But I thought the way they played, it was a huge shot of confidence for this football team. Thanks so much for watching Hun Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.